Hello everybody and welcome to our last piece of the War of the Spark Complete Set Review. I am Evan Irwin. I'm Erin Campbell. And I'm Room Tone Bressler. <laughs> That's right. We are Magic Mics. And thanks to the wonderful people on Kickstarter, we have a brand new Complete Set Review for you. And that is this set right here. We are in the final stages. This is the final segment. And it's all of the planes. Well, it's the segment before he eats a pie. Right. So. Oh, right. <clears throat> We're not letting him off the hook that right. easily. It's, uh, we, almost... do have, we have Mausoleum Secrets is the payoff here. Right, right, uh, right. We did establish a new a new pie bet this set review mm -hmm. oh so many hours ago right. um, for Ignite the Beacon. Ignite the Beacon. Yep. Great. We'll see. We'll Perfect. see. And uh, we'll see if, I, I don't know if another one's coming up. We'll have to see if there's some contentious argument about Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers are notoriously hard to see if they're good. Right. People are very bad at predicting yep. if a Planeswalker will be good or not. Um, and there's 36 of them. So there could be a number of pie bets here, depending on how strongly people feel about their various I friends. Guess, I guess we'll see. Our super friends. That's right. Uh, John in the Great Heart is a white, a green, and two generic mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. It is a rare legendary a Johnny, of course. It says, creatures you control have vigilance. Plus one, you gain three life. And minus two, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each other planeswalker you control. I want to give Victor Mingus another shout out because he has done amazing things with Ajani in this particular block. Um, you know, Ajani was in the Guilds of Ravnica mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. um, and you see Ajani in the act just grabbing Eternal by the head as he's running by. Like, he's given Ajani this sort of lifelike fierce but still kind of fun yeah. element to him that wasn't normally there before and I love his take on this card. Behind the word vigilance you can just barely see the outline of the squirrel. Yeah I was looking for it. The, the squirrel art. is my favorite. The full part the full art of a Johnny has the squirrel yeah. running alongside which I really like. Yeah. Uh, four mana, five loyalty, able to put plus one plus one counters on your team and gain life and your creatures always have vigilance. Very similar to a Johnny Goldmane. It's true. Uh, a Johnny Goldmane had an ultimate. I don't think I've ever used it. The avatar thing? The avatar thing. Yeah. But it's plus ability gave counters. It's, uh, I'm sorry, it's plus minus, ability gained life. It's right. minus ability gave counters. gave counters. This is very similar to that. So I don't, hmm. I, I don't think that it's completely unlikely that this will see constructive play. No, no, I, I don't think, I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily pushed that hard. I agree. But again, we're in the literally the most difficult card type to evaluate. So yeah. I guess we'll see. Uh, that said, and I'll just go ahead and say it. Like, these are all Planeswalkers. Planeswalkers are all basically universally awesome and basically universally playable. Right. Because even the worst walkers, even the worst uncommon walkers we talk about, are going to see play in your limited decks. Mm -hmm. So pick them early, pick them often, and you're going to love it. I don't know sort of how else to sort of preface that. I, yeah. just, don't want, I just don't want to say it for every single card and be like, well, and this is great and limited, and you want, might see play constructive. Like, they're Planeswalkers. They're sweet. Right. Angrath. Captain of Chaos is two Rakdos mana, two uh, black-red hybrid, and two generic mana. For a five loyalty uncommon legendary planeswalker, Angrath, creatures you control have menace, and minus two, you amass two. I'm confused from a flavor perspective. Same. Because Angrath doesn't appear to be working with the other side. Right. But yet he makes zombie army tokens. And so I don't know if this is sort of his mind control aspect because there was the Angrath that he's playing standard currently that has a, you can take control of a creature. Yeah. So I don't know if that's what he's doing here, but I'm really confused as to why he's making zombie army tokens. Same. Yeah. I, that was confusing from a, from a, flavor perspective on Angrath. I think it's probably just a concession to wanting to have there be a Planeswalker that can amass. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that's the reason because I don't think we saw Angrath in any sort of position on either side. No, he's always been very adamant about his goal being to get home to his family. Yep. He has no desire to like really get involved in that and yet... Hmm. It's very maybe odd. there's something in the book that was yeah. Funny. yeah. You know, maybe he's just sort of like a, an angry neutral party or something. Yeah, that's and, what I thought was was happening. Yeah, and I feel like Angrath is more in the thing of like if we could just finish this. If yeah. Nickel Bolas takes over, I don't care. I just want to get home. Yeah, because Angrath just wants to go home. Just wants to see his kids. Yeah, he just wants to go home. So if like helping you know the zombie it's army out, gets home, yeah. who cares? Uh, and this card is super sweet. We saw it in play at the pre pre release. It was awesome. All of your creatures getting menace. <clears throat> that's serious business. Sure. Arlen, Voice of the Pack, is two green for generic mana for a seven loyalty uncommon legendary planeswalker Arlen. Each creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Minus two, create a two two green wolf creature token. Can we talk about the fact 
that Arlen looks a little refreshed. Mm. Like Arlen mm. looks like she went to the dentist. Mm. Like has Arlen some, looks like has she has some work done. done. <laughs> Little work, what? You're not wrong. I mean, maybe her and Tulsimir are friends, and that's why she's looking a little better these days. Right. But maybe, maybe going to the uh, to the Ravnica spa retreat was a it's good possible. Move. But that was the thing that really struck me about she this got card. A little bit was... of the Amass injection. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Tighten up a little bit, right. a little bit of the Lazatep treatment. Right in the MS, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just that was the first thing that stuck me out. It was that Arlen appeared to be a middle-aged woman in the right. previous set, and she looks a little... Uh, 20s-ish? She, yeah. She so, looks, I mean, yeah. the whole point of Arlen and why Arlen was cool and different yeah. was that she was like the grand, almost a grandma, probably right. just like, you know, late mom yeah. type of person. And right. That was unique. Mm -hmm. Mid-40s, early 50s kind of character, yeah. and definitely yeah. looks like my age. In right, like photo. she wanted to talk to your manager. Right. And now... She does not want to talk to your manager. All she wants to do is make Snapchats because older people don't understand them. See? See? Because Evan brought up Snapchat and didn't understand it. But so, I, but I, but I feel but very attacked. Um, right I, wow. I do like the concession here to put the word werewolf on Arlen, even mm -hmm. though there are no werewolves in this set. Right. I'm pleased with that. That's nice. Because it tells the story of Arlen as opposed to confining to just the story of Ravnica. Yeah. Um, making a wolf every turn for three turns is a big game. It's a huge game. Um, and yeah, I just, I, or making a 3 3 wolf every turn yeah. is a yeah. huge game. But that also. can be proliferated on. True. And if you proliferate once, you're going to get four wolves out of her, which right. is amazing. So, like, this card is expensive, but man, the payoff is real. Yeah. Ashiok, Dream Render. Two Demir mana, blue black, and a generic mana. For a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker, spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. Minus one colon, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. Every one. All of them. Every single one. Is this an I don't know them situation? Here's here's this is a Tyra Banks. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Situation. I was so excited to see this card, and this was such a this card's such a heartbreak. Here's for the me. thing. Here's the thing for me though. The green instant that was destroy an artifact or destroy an enchantment or remove one graveyard card. You were like, yeah, I'm on board with this. If Ashiok's fighting for you, if Ashiok's on your team, you get to mill yourself for four and then exile their graveyard. You don't exile your own graveyard. Sam Black it's apparently only... just went all out on that very topic of you mill yourself. Yeah. You exile their crap, which takes care of their like random phoenixes or whatever. But you always target <clears> yourself. <throat> I mean, I'm always targeting myself with my like diligent excavators anyway. Like right. self-mill is a lifestyle that I live under with, you know, spider spawning dot deck all the time in every format. Um, Ashiok mm -hmm. does that and it does it a lot, very well. So you just gotta, you just gotta realign, you know, think about Ashiok on your team. Wow. You know, just Look, imagine. I, I will give that to you. Happen. I hadn't considered using it for my own for my own benefit, but yeah, this does have a kind of the dimmer feeler feeler uh, <laughs> feeler yep. viability <clears throat> here um, of, of dimmer. You think of shadow of doubt, you know, preventing you from fetching and going to look for things. So I do appreciate the callback to a very old school kind of dimmer, dimmer flavor yeah. mechanic. Um, but yeah, the the second ability kind of scared me a little bit, and I was just like, ooh, repeatable, just a repeatable round trap is nasty. Mm, no, repeatable mill yourself. That's yeah. what's exciting. It's exciting. That said, uh, I want whoever <clears throat> can build this deck in Legacy, I want to play Dark Ritual Ashiok. I don't care what it's in. I don't care if it's even that good. That's kind of amazing. Immediately playing an Ashiok and shutting off of fetch lands is huge. Crazy huge. That's awesome. So I want that in my life. I want to see that. I want my opponent to be sad. Just like playing dinosaurs you yeah. know, in Legacy. I want right. to play Ashiok and then go, wait, well, what's the card do? Right. And then they look back at their fetch lands, they look at yeah. the card, look at their fetch lands, kind look at the amazing. card. I mean, I like it. That's awesome. This card is super sweet. Um, this is a card that can literally mill 20 cards, which is often enough to just kill your opponent anyway in limited. So, you know, don't don't sleep on this as an aggressive threat, essentially. In limited, Did you constructed, play it and mill yourself. You said don't sleep and it's dream render. Wow. Don't sleep and know just what you're thinking. <laughs> as she are dream render. Wow. Sam is thinking more Mariah Carey, like, Dream Render, come rescue me. Mm -hmm. It's karaoke night. Take me up, take me down. 
Oh. Oh. Chandra, fire artisan, is two red, two generic mana for a four loyalty rare planeswalker. That says whenever one or more loyalty counters are removed from Chandra, fire artisan, she deals that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker. That means if anything removes uh, loyalty counters, including damage dealt from creatures attacking her. Right. That's a thing. Plus one, exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. Minus Very familiar by now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Minus seven, exile the top seven cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Oof. This card is real good. This card is crazy. Immediately ticks up to five as a four mana walker. Technically <laughs> protects itself. Has a little bit of that Vraska, if you deal damage to me, I'm going to deal damage to you situation going on. Mm -hmm. Um... And, you know, having the, it's a, this is essentially the Chandra draw card ability that we're used to at this point. This one allowing you to play the lands, notably. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is literally card draw in red. Yeah. Red does not get card draw unless it's on top of Chandra, I guess, as it were, because that plus one is amazing. Like, literally, it's just plus one draw card. You don't have to play it. You may not get to play it. But if you do, you just howling mind yourself. Right. And if they attack it with a 3-3, three, three, you're going to kill it. Right. Because it's going to go down to two loyalty and then do three damage to that thing. Like, that's yeah. amazing. A lot of the time, one ones are able to tick down Planeswalkers, keep them at bay. Right. one ones aren't going to be able to do that to Chandra. Yeah, they're so. just going to die. Like, that's nuts. And next turn, you just get to, again, draw an extra card. The other cool thing, I really like that Chandra is just going to kill a Carnage Tyrant that attacks her. Like, it, it protects itself very well. Uh, it doesn't deal to no, the target, right? No, no, it targets. It deals damage oh, it deals to target opponent or planes. To walk. target opponent or planes. So I, thought it just dealt, I thought it just dealt damage oh. to whatever it was And dealt. clearly, I just got it wrong as I thought it could deal damage to creatures, so that's my bad. Or she's but dealt, killing she's your opponent's opponent planeswalkers, planes walkers. hitting your opponent in the face for whatever she was hit with in right. terms of loyalty counters. You hit me, I'll hit you fine. back, still function. Still a fine thing. And again, plus one draw a card in red. That's the important part. Yes, right. the loyalty thing is cool and cute, but yeah, drawing cards is nuts. Davriel, Rogue Shadow Mage, is a black and two generic mana for a three loyalty uncommon planeswalker. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in the hand, it deals two damage to them. Uh, and minus one, target player discards a card. Eight rack players in modern have been excited about this card as another sort of shrieking affliction, another rack type effect yep. um, on a planeswalker, which again, when you're used to seeing eight rack, you think of a whole bunch of spells and a couple of artifacts. You don't really think of planeswalkers. And so you don't even really need to, I mean, you could certainly get a couple activations out of this, but again, just that static effect. We talked about in creatures, if you just get a four or five flyer for four, that's fine. Never mind anything else. A, a, a rack type effect for three that gives you two discard two you know two discard things and then just leave it there is fine right well you're pro proliferating you yeah, know what yeah I mean? so, you're, <clears throat> so you're keeping knocking but an eight rack up. you're not though what i'm right. saying is if you're just no. playing modern eight rack and you burn two counters the effect itself is still fine you're right. still getting the rack effect oh yeah for sure yeah and, and that's that's terrific so in limited you're able to proliferate this and whatnot i think in constructed this is an option certainly against uh control decks sure. uh if you have if you're playing against one or maybe even the mirror would be very yeah. interesting with this card uh, again because you're going to have proliferate and standard that's going to be a thing and to keep your opponent at zero cards you're like oh i have to dis you know i have to make sure i play everything so so this thing can't get me well then it's going to get you real quick shout out to the artistic team for choosing to have davriel and ashiok have these have their names be obscured by the magic that is um uh, being used by these characters that are essentially mind destruction kind of mages dream mm. render and Davriel, of course, affecting the mind with the mind rot kind of ability. Mm -hmm. I think that that's an interesting stylistic choice to go with the frames being impacted by that as these planeswalkers, and I think it's really cool. I think this card is super good, and I think this is super constructed playable, and that everyone is like weirdly dismissing this card. I'm like, it's three cards for three mana, right. and if you proliferate, it's four? Or if it's if you proliferate, you get three discards and it just sits there and hurts them. I'm also excited to see more about Davriel. Davriel, of course, being the planeswalker that Brandon Sanderson created um, as part of uh, his story. And this is sort of the first. This is the first time we've seen Davriel right, in a, a Magic set. Right. And doesn't die in the event. Spoiler alert: doesn't die in the events of War of the Spark, mm -hmm. and can therefore be taken in a new direction if they so choose. Absolutely. So yeah, this card is super sweet. Domri Anarch 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 You are not <laughs> You freaking you gotta, you gotta tell me if you are Anarch Bolas You are Anarch But you got some Y on you You wearing a Y <laughs> Hey, Domri. Domri, the Anarch You are Anarch Bolas You gotta tell me if you are not. All right <laughs> 
Domri Anarch of Bolas is a green or red and generic mana for a three loyalty rare planeswalker. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero. Plus one at a red or a green. Creature spells you cast this turn can't be countered. Minus two target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Uh, this is very, very good and very powerful. Yeah. It's hard to push the three mana walkers too far. Again, we have land war elves in, right. the, in standard. We have uh, shock lands that can help get this thing out no problem. So you can't have it go too far. But the ability to power out this on turn two, yeah. plus one land or rail for plus one some other one drop, would right. be a pretty big game. I, I'm really interested to see how Domri's arc plays out because he's really riding hard for Bolas. And then just to see, you know, you have the soul, the, the blue-black creature threatening him. You have his final days with the spark harvest. It, it's a really tragic fall i guess of like how did it go so well and then just end so i have a lot of thoughts on domri and the gruel in general and their relationship with bolas hmm. the gruel are unique amongst the guilds specifically because of their relationship with civilization the other nine guilds are okay with it or in total support of it the gruel are there as a check on that you know, mm -hmm. check and balance on that. They totally want anarchy. They totally want a return to the beginning. The end raise boar is supposed to signal when everything gets taken down and everything starts over. So Domery is really attracted to what Nicol Bolas has to offer. The other four planeswalkers who are leaders of guilds are attracted to certain facets of Nicol Bolas, but aren't buying in entirely. Ral and Kaya have their sort of power uh, issues where they uh, where they're like yeah we want to be in charge right and so they 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 make sense on that sort of uh, uh, that sort of level um, when it comes to um, what's the other one that I'm missing uh, in terms of the planeswalkers so there's Vraska who definitely Dovin, wanted to be yeah, Vraska definitely wanted to be in charge of the Golgari specifically right. and Dovin wanted to to uh, impose order impose order right. and the best way that he could do it was the Azorius. but I can't believe that Domri wanted this to the point where self preservation wasn't an issue like he right. doesn't seem like a martyr so no, like rule. you know right what I'm just saying is it's just I don't see how he didn't I, the other thing about Domri is that he's very young yeah and this is a tragic story of of someone who wasn't fully developed, wasn't grown up yet, buying into a a figure that he trusted in that didn't teach him exactly what was going on and falling as a result. Sure. Right. So and, this and is a, a really uh, cautious tale. And playing into it. Like yeah. he he was like, oh, you're gonna destroy everything and remake it? I'm up for that. That's what right. we're here to do, you know? So like I can understand him grasping onto it. Again, there's the youth angle of where he's just sort of and he's just naive. He doesn't know what he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't know that if you're trying to serve someone that powerful, they can turn on you just like that. Yep. And then you're dead. It kind of reminds me of like how certain <coughs> charitable contributions or even just certain <coughs> websites start out with really good intentions. And then eventually yeah. it gets like commercialized or it gets like, yeah. you know, the person who used to be, you know, uh, for lack of a better example, you look like a Mark Zuckerberg who started off being a college kid that was like, I want people to know each other. And then five right. years later, you're inadvertently responsible for uprisings in Myanmar. Right. You know, like you start off having a really charitable kind yeah. of point of view or wanting to rebuild the world or whatever. And then other interests get involved and your your you know path gets a little askew. I mean, you know, Google is like, don't be evil or whatever. And then all of a sudden there's like engineers that quit because they won't do work for the U.S. spy programs yeah, or yeah. whatever. Like, that's crazy, and that's a good example of just, you know, well, we, we bought in, and we shouldn't have. Dovin, Hand of Control, is very controlling. It's a Azorius hybrid mana and two generic mana, so three total. A five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. That says artifact instant and sorcery spells your opponent's cast cost one generic mana more to cast. And minus one until your next turn prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by target permanent and opponent controls. This is something that Legacy Miracles has been talking about. You know, they oh, wow. really want to kind of stall the game uh, with Terminus, with Swords to Plowshares, with Jace until you can sort of get that mentor or get that Entreat to Angels line going. And so I think if any deck really wants to stall you, you know, this is kind of kind of be the one to do that where you're able to prevent that damage to yourself um you have sort of there's even talk of this possibly in the death and taxes decks as being sure. redundant copies of thalia i know they're running vryn Wingmare right now uh which is fine but there's always room for more and there's arguments as to whether or not you want this over vryn and so there are a couple of white controlling decks that are entertaining the idea of this card and it'll be interesting to see if they stick this card's I, nuts yeah this card's really good i really like that 
this, the Planeswalkers in particular in this set are speaking the language of magic from the past 20 years. I read Dovin Hand of Control, and I picture in my head Grand Arbiter Augustine IV, yeah. which was from the original Ravnica block, and this harkens back to that, because mm -hmm. Dovin is now the Azorius guild leader. I look at a card like the uh, Domri, Anarch of Bolas, has creatures you control of plus one, plus one. That's the Orcish Orlaflem effect. Mm -hmm. And so I read that, and I think to myself, oh, that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. it, there's some poetry there. Sure. I look at Ashiok, Shadow of Doubt, again, that sort of language of if you've played mm -hmm. this game this whole time, you can see the translation of how they've taken the language of magic put them on these planeswalkers so that they each tell their own individual story and don't have to do it with flavor text. Because none of the planeswalkers have any flavor text, yeah. and yet they all kind of have flavor text. Yeah, that's really good. This card, I'm just, I, I still can't, it's hard to wrap my head around the five loyalty. That's a, sure. that's a super high amount in a world where you're playing a control deck where you're wanting to make them commit more to the board, which is exactly what it's doing. And then they do, and then you wrath them. And then you wait, and you proliferate this guy back up or whatever, and then they put a threat, and you just keep, you know, mm -hmm. you know, no, proliferate, no. And then they finally start putting more things out, wrath, you know. Well, we've also seen them trying to take blue-white in more of a tempo direction, as opposed to sort of the bore you to tears control that they're kind of known for in older formats. And so, um, you know, you look at this, you look at Dovin's Acuity, you look at the Thopters from, from Radica Allegiance, you know, that was something that we saw, I think it was Gavin and Marshall using a lot of in the pre-pre-release, you know, not really controlling, but just keeping up with you, matching resources. Yeah. And I think it's an interesting <laughs> direction to take blue-white in, and I think if it can continues this is where you want to be with that play style right it taxes your opponent which is nice yep. and neutralizes their best thing so you can fly over it or whatever mm -hmm. with your evasion um, this card is really powerful speaking of powerful gideon blackblade is here two white one generic mana for a four loyalty mythic planeswalker as long as it's your turn it's a four four human soldier with indestructible that's still a planeswalker prevent all damage that will be dealt to it during your turn plus one up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of vigilance lifelink or indestructible until end of turn which is a very gideon sacrifice and minus six it exiles target non-land permanent I'm really surprised, given what we know about the Black Blade, that Gideon didn't somehow go Orzov. Like, the Black Blade has a really grim history to it, where mm -hmm. how are you able to stay mono white holding on to that thing? Like, sure. I would really mm -hmm. love to know if that's something they're going to hash out in the story, or maybe somebody's going to expand on that, you know, in a blog, or maybe Allison Lures will go on a Twitter rant or something. But I was really expecting, when we saw the hints that he was going to be inching towards the Black Blade, <coughs> I was expecting there to be some evolution in terms of his color pie and he's still white and I'm like how? Because like, he's wholesome. Right. That's how. Has wholesome. the word black <laughs> that's right pretty, in the name. But right that's in the name. grim though. Right. It is. Yeah. I mean it's not like he you know took your mail and didn't return it. This is a, a sword forged in the blood of like the sons of the guy who did it. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just passively arm that thing. So. Yeah. No. But it's I mean, pretty sad. It's Alexa pretty plays epic. Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> um, <laughs> this card is bananas. Yeah. This is a Three mana, four, four, that you can't cast Sorcery Speed Wraths to kill. Mm -hmm. right. uh, pumps up your other creatures and saves some of your other creatures with that Indestructible Clause. And oh, by the way, can take out literally anything if he needs to sacrifice But not himself. a land. Not a land. Yeah. Not um, a land. Takes care fine. of any Planeswalker, takes care of any artifact, takes care of any enchantment. Um, just a, an insanely powerful card. I, I, this card is very, very good. And of course, Gideon being... Uh, the central sacrifice figure of the story, um, being the one who gives himself up, uh, thanks to Gideon's sacrifice, uh, to be able to finally put an end to Bolas's reign. Yeah, which is terrific. So it's both thematic, uh, it's incredibly powerful. Yeah. Uh, it is undoubtedly meant to be one of the best cards in the set. It is undoubtedly meant to be seen in constructed play, and I absolutely expect it there. And yeah, this card has all the right numbers and abilities to do exactly what you want to do, which is crush your opponent's dreams. That's, that's what it does. Watley, the Sun's Heart, is a green slash white. It is a Celestia hybrid and two generic mana, so three total, for a seven loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. And for minus three, you gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. This is, well, the three mana hybrid uncommon walkers that have seven loyalty that only tick down are 
ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, you thought Dovin's five was a lot. Seven is a lot. It's a lot, a lot. And this one, I'm, I don't even know if I want to care about that minus three. Yeah. Like, I'm just okay sitting here with my walls suddenly being four fours, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty insane. Now, this one doesn't allow your walls to attack, which is the big difference between this and High Alert and Arcades. Right. You're still probably playing them all in the same deck. Right. But you might play one or two of this. For sure. As well as play sets of those. It's like a stopgap solution. Yeah. Right. It's a stopgap solution. It's still something that makes your toughness matter. And if you needed to, you can still minus three and gain a bunch of life. Sure. And she's still hanging out doing her thing, yeah. which is cool. Um, I'm not sure how to evaluate this thing in Limited. I really don't. Me neither. It's just there's so much loyalty. I don't remember. I don't recall effects like that being noteworthy. Well, eh, yeah, okay they, from time to time. It is strange. the The last time that we've had this without the attacking clause was Doran, and Doran was a bit of an outlier That's in and true. of himself. Assault formation that allowed your creatures to attack. Right. Oh, oh, you Doran. Just mean, oh, Doran just, just did that. That clause. having Sorry. the toughness where where you hit people with butts, but you can't attack with butts. Right. Right. It, the last time we saw that was Doran. Where your walls behaved like seven sevens with defender. Right. This is the first time we've seen that specific breakdown. So, even though planeswalkers are notoriously hard to uh, uh, evaluate, this is even harder still because right. of how unique this particular effect is. I can imagine it's not that game breaking considering yeah. all the numbers on this card, but it's definitely interesting. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, is blue, 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 and a generic mana. That's four mana for a four loyalty rare Planeswalker. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Plus one, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard, draw a card. So, uh, Thought, Thought Scour, Thought Scour, thank you. And minus eight, you draw seven cards. Then, if your library has no cards in it, you win the game. There's been some talk of this in vintage in like a soul tie deck that you can you can do you can do sort of the fair soul tie thing with like death right shaman leovolt and all of that, and then just happen to have one or two of these in there. Demonic consultation is a thing. Demonic tutor is a thing. Vampire tutor is a thing. It's not hard to turn your library you know into your graveyard, as I know. Um, you know, and it's also a lot harder to deal with than a lab maniac. You know, it does effectively the same thing, but there are so many ways to kill a lab maniac you can't abrupt decay this um in the way that you can a lab maniac you can bolt a lab maniac you can plow a lab maniac but it's much harder to deal with this and so if this is your goal to do this thing this is probably the better option and so there are a couple of blue mages that are very interested in this oh yeah. this is really exciting any any card that says win the game on it twice mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's worth looking at real you can hard. even do this with like a taking turns deck the blue deck sure. in modern that just wants to draw a bunch of cards i mean have fun. <laughs> sure. And again, speaking the language of magic players, three colors, blue, blue, blue. What comes to mind? Cryptic, Cryptic man. man. Right. Uh, the first line, laboratory maniac. The second line, thought scour. They're speaking our language. Right. And they're, they're giving us a feeling without necessarily having to put the full text of those cards on the card. Right. They still just give us the essence of, of what they want us to feel. And they did a really good job of that with all the Planeswalkers. Yeah, this card's super sweet, crazy good and limited. If you can, if you can cast it with yeah. triple blue, oh my goodness. No, Jaya. No pie bets. No pie bets. Jaya, venerated fire mage is a red and four generic mana. You say that you're once burned? So. Yeah, wow. once burned, not gonna fire mage again. Twice. Once burned, twice pie. <laughs> twice pie, nice. <laughs> One red, four generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. If another red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage, plus one to that permanent or player instead. Here as well with Chandra. Yeah. And minus two, it deals two damage to any target. I mean, it's very good. <clears throat> it's very I think good. that this is probably better as a mono red planeswalker in a non dedicated Jaya centric kind of deck sure. than original Jaya. Obviously, right. much easier to cast. It's a removal spell in and of its own. Pretty cool. Creatures I, and spells and planeswalkers. Yeah. Any red, red source. source. Yeah. Any red source you got. So it in and of itself uh, deals three. Now mm -hmm. technically it deals two right there, but it adds the one. Right. So it's minus two, deal three to something. I, I actually think that they made this cost five, so it would not be played in the mono red deck. Sure. Because this would be, if this was four, <laughs> it would immediately be the four drop in that deck. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For sure. It would be like Experimental Frenzies, cute and all, maybe right. run a But Jaya, Jaya Two Bolts. Jaya Two Bolts is nuts. Jaya Two Bolts. Old Jaya Two Bolts. Yeah. I mean, this is still Jaya Two Bolts, it just costs five. Right now, it just yeah. costs five. So now it's just like a limited all star. Oh, yeah. But it would have been a constructed powerhouse at one less mana. Uh, Zhang Yangu, is that right? Evan. 
You can say Zhang Yanggu, but you can't say Sam at Spirit. First of all, he can't say Zhang Yanggu. <laughs> Zhang Yanggu? He tried. He said it like it was a question. Well, uh, Zhang just, Yanggu, yes. I just want to make we sure also right. had practice with, with, I know, with, I with dual deck, whatever. With Mo Wu and stuff. Um, Zhang Yanggu Wildcrafter is a green and two generic mana for a three loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter has tap, add one mana of any color, and minus one, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. This card is quite good. Mm -hmm. um, pairs well with Mowu. Pairs very well with Mowu. Yeah, as it uh, should. As it should, of course, with Mowu hanging out in the background there. Mm -hmm. um, pairs play. very He's well. So pairs, pairs extremely well with Proliferate, not just getting more loyalty itself, but whatever you put the plus one plus one counter on, and mm -hmm. helping you to cast any of those Proliferate spells. Yeah, this card is so powerful in that you can play this card, and then now all of the card, all the creatures with the plus one plus one counters tap for mana, and then you can play something else. Like, that in and of itself is yeah. terrific. Or you can play it, put a counter on whatever, and then tap right. it for mana to do something else. Like, this thing has a ton of potential. Uh, it's super sweet for three mana. It's amazing and limited. And we'll see if it can actually get there and construct it. I doubt it, but it's still really sweet. Karn, the Great Creator, is four generic mana for a five loyalty rare Planeswalker. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. Plus one, until your next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its converted mana cost. Minus two, you may choose an artifact card you own from outside the game or in exile, reveal that card, and put it in your hand. This is another exciting card that the vintage folks are talking about. I mean, a four mana null rod, it's it's, it's not hard to cast anything for four mana right. in vintage, especially if you're using colorless mana sources. Um, the problem with null rod and even sphere effects to a certain degree is that they're terrible in multiples. Um, I can't tell you how many games I've lost with a null rod in play because it doesn't do anything other than be a null rod. Um, the fact that you can tutor for an artifact that's not even in the game, for its sideboard cards. I mean, think of what you can do in terms of your sideboard with that. We have Word of Invention, yeah. but it has to be, I mean, think of all the blue mana symbols, the improvise, and it has to be in your deck and all of all of that. This can be anything you want. I mean, this is so, so powerful. A one side, it's a one-sided null rod at that. You know, a lot of the a lot of the shops decks will play a null rod knowing that it hurts them too. This is a one-sided null rod. That is bananas. The fact that you can take a sphere of resistance or a null rod if you have one and make it a creature and just get in there for the rubbins. I mean, that is wild. I mean, this is a, a really, really exciting card. Uh, there was a Michelson's Lattice buyout after this card was previewed yep. because if everything's an artifact, then nothing is. And so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see. And you can even get a Mica Synth Lattice if you have one in your sideboard. Yeah. Woo! The Stax players were all over this in Vintage. I would be very surprised if this didn't see play. In addition, Modern Tron is now going to be playing eight Karns because for seven mana, you can get Karn Liberated. Or for seven mana, you can get Karn the Great Creator, minus two, and get uh, Trinisphere, Ensnaring Bridge. Snaring Bridge. Uh, there's a, there was another insane three-man artifact that I'm forgetting. You can get an Oblivion Stone. There you go. Um, in addition to having the rest of your Karn board be a Mica Synth Lattice, a Dark Steel Forge, um, you know, a Blight Steel Colossus, like anything that you could possibly imagine you want in your sideboard with Karn. And so you have this weird wish board that you can have thanks to Karn the Great Creator. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be how... So based on what I had... based on I, I did a little bit of research prior to this, and based on my research, the traditional Tron folks weren't as excited about this as they were something else we'll talk about. Sure. But I think if you wanted to take it in a different direction, there's certainly room for that. Maybe even the were folks? I have no idea. The were folk, huh? Yeah. Because okay. were lets you go through your oh, library. I know, I'm but... sorry. Right. Mer All right. Yeah, yeah. Were folk, <laughs> mer folk. It's very cute. Kazmina, Enigmatic Mentor, is a blue and three generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Spells your opponent's cast that target a creature or planeswalker you control cost two more to cast. Minus two, create a 2-2 two -two blue wizard creature token, draw a card, then discard a card. This might be the best blue planeswalker in the set. I mean, this card really is good in the really good. Like, taxing your opponents as opposed to making them uh, counter the spell is a huge deal. So now your, abrupt, your opponent's abrupt decays cost four. 
Making a creature in mono blue is a big deal. Right. Looting is quite good. Um, and this is another character that we don't know pretty much anything about and might be the blue mage of the future that we can learn more. We do know that this is a character that Nissa Cosplay was given access to and that she's been hard at work on something with this with this character and I think she's going to kill it. Nice. So I can't wait to see more. Yeah, this is, uh, and this is a terrific uh, Planeswalker again. Saw it in play at the pre-pre-release. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, there was a question that came up at one point of if something targets two mm. of your permanents or two of your creatures or two of your Planeswalkers or whatever, right. how much more do they have to pay uh, and it's just the two just the two just the two if no matter how many targets just tip two. just to see how it feels all right so casmini and magnet mentor absolutely terrific super duper playable also more redheads again and may i recommend speaking of redheads if you need a blue wizard token Bang. go use my dominarias they're only one ones but they're they're right. flexible works, as right. am i so. they, they believe in themselves enough they're two twos absolutely yeah. absolutely Kaya, Bane of the Dead, is next. It is wow. three Orzov mana, black slash white, and three generic mana. So for six six mana total, you get a seven loyalty, uncommon, legendary planeswalker. Your opponents and permanents your opponents control with hexproof can be the target of spells and abilities you control as though they didn't have hexproof. Minus three, exile target creature. Nice carnage, Tyrant. Yeah. yeah. Yo, this card is real. This Curse. card is Dope. insane. Dope. Uh, yeah, six mana for the ability in a mono white or mono black deck to be able to deal with those things, to be able to deal with a Carnage Tyrant. Now you can deal with a Lich's Mastery, by the way. Yeah. Um, wow. Super interesting card. Wow, that's fantastic. And this is the payoff for a type of proliferate control. If you're going to play Karn's Bastion at the end of your turn, this is the type of card you want to tick up. Like, okay, I've, I've wrathed your board or whatever. We're not really doing anything. Okay, we'll proliferate, move all my stuff, and say go. Uh, Kaya is expensive, but she is a hell of a payoff. Uh, this is going to get rid of two of their best creatures, no matter what they have, no matter how many hexproof things they have written on them. Kai is sweet. And Kai is coming. That's right. Much like Omar. Yeah. Yeah. Kai is coming. That's right. Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner, is a Simic slash green slash blue mana and two generic mana for a seven loyalty. Uncommon legendary planeswalker. Whenever a creature with battlefield or I'm sorry, whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Mm. Minus one, untapped target permanent. We've reviewed so many cards, uh, mostly in green, that are just effortless. Four or more is not hard to do, and the card advantage that this card offers is disgusting. Again, a static ability that's fine on its own. It can do the typical Kiora things of like untapping dorks and things like that, but if you're just playing fatties and drawing cards, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> The, the putting the, the putting the aura on the land so it has for two mana and then this untaps it like the ramp ability of this is insane the ramp and then you get the card off of it because what you ramped into is fantastic it the only cynics. takes one loyalty and yeah. it does it seven times yeah, yeah. I mean, this in to, a mono green deck is going to be a huge game yeah the two Jesus. big cynic rares between the the bio the bio four four that absorbs loyalty yeah. mm -hmm. and then just the the the, the weird guardian yeah. double proliferate with her right. oh my god oh, yeah. I honestly think Kiora is the Planeswalker that I personally am most excited about in this set. I yeah. think it's the one that is the most likely to spawn a new archetype in constructed, like in standard, immediately. And it's about time, because Kiora sort of had these sort of fringe cards where it was like, you know, yeah, if you happen to be playing, oh God, what was it? Like the Gates deck, she was fine right. the first time around. And like the second time around, it was still kind of meh, right. like team or something. You're being but, way too gracious. Her cards are, are crap. Yeah. Okay, we'll her go there, but... Everyone. You know, she. I think she's one of those planeswalkers like Chandra. Chandra went years without having like a good right. Chandra, right. and and I think Kiora is long overdue for like a good format defining. And card. I think that Kiora is, you know, this is this is a card that I would take a pie bet on. Mm -hmm. I think that we're all on the same page with it, though. Yeah, I ain't taking no pie bet right. on this. I think ridiculous. we're all on the same page that mm -hmm. we think the Kiora is ridiculous. Yeah, God, Kiora is amazing. I just wow. It, it, if it was just untapped permanence seven times, right. exactly, I would be excited right? about it. But no, let me draw cards too. Thanks. Speaking of exciting cards, Liliana Dreadhorde General is here to black for generic mana for a six loyalty mythic planeswalker. Whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Okay. Plus one, make a 2 2 zombie creature. You really token. could have stopped there. <laughs> yeah, right. Minus four. There's more? Minus four barter in blood. That means each player sacrifices two creatures. They had that thing in standard in That's like, right. Forever. Well, dead drop was the last time we had that in standard in cons block. Something like that. And you had to do a lot. Exactly. Uh, minus four, well, like I said, 
Each yeah. player sacrifices two creatures. Minus nine, each opponent chooses a permanent they control of each permanent type and sacks the rest. Yeah, another zombie. We've seen these zombie lords that give menace, flying, what have you. These zombies are affected by that too. I mean, whenever a creature, normally that means non-token. No, those tokens you made that you just sacrificed or killed. Yeah, you get cards from that too. I mean, this is an engine. I mean, it's expensive. But if you're able to stick it, you're in for some good times. If you ever played Elspeth Sun's Champion. Right. It is very similar, I feel. Mm-hmm. Absolutely very similar to Elspeth's. No one's ready for Barter and Blood. I'm telling you. They don't know. They don't know. They think they know, but they don't know. This card is ridiculously good. <laughs> um, I don't good. think that Control is in a spot right now with the current Control decks where Liliana would be good. Mm-hmm. However, once the set comes out, mm-hmm. and once there are more ways to deal with Planeswalkers specifically, mm-hmm. then Liliana gets a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this card is just... Bananas, it gives you card advantage. You can play her and then attack and see if they want to trade off and give you cards. If they don't, you can barter in blood and if you sack your own stuff and draw cards. If you just tick up to one, it's seven loyalty. It seven loyalty with a 2-2 two, two standing in front. And a nine ultimate? Your card That's it's not crazy. much time. Nope, not, not a lot. Right. Yeah. It's just like, okay, you want to, you know, please attack me so I can chump block and draw a card. That would be terrific. <laughs> Like, Liliana was huge and pushed and is a main part of the storyline and was the first Planeswalker they showed you. And there's a reason for that. It's because this card is amazing. You remember when they did that with Gideon of Outlaw of Zendikar? Yeah. And everyone was just like, is that it? Is that, is that all? Is that all? And it does? just ran standard yep. for two years? Like, they showed you this card for a reason. This card is amazing. Nahiri, Storm of Stone, is two Boros mana, red slash white, and two generic mana, so four total for a six loyalty uncommon planeswalker. As long as it's your turn, creatures you control have first strike and and equip abilities you activate cost one generic mana less to activate. Is there any actual equipment in this set? Not a one. Not in this (laughs) set. Not a one. They are. They did hint about making colored equipment, and that's how they're going to make equipment better. Okay, because I know that got people excited where they are like, are we getting equipment? And right, then the full right. set came out, and it was like, it's why like, do no, we no have equipment. this? Okay. Because flavor, you know. Because okay. um, it's Nahiri. Yeah, sure. it's Nahiri, it's fine. Uh, but that said, minus X, she uh, deals X damage to target tapped creature. Yep. So. Fitting in with all the things that Nahiri does, mm-hmm. which is dealing with tapped permanence, dealing with equipment. Uh, it just a, it's, a, it's an interesting card. I think that this is fine. Also, being able to uh, pick off a 5-5 five five or a 6-6 six six, mm-hmm. um, is, is pretty uh, pretty impressive as well. It's big game. Yeah. Proliferate with this big game. Yeah. Uh, your opponents are not going to want to attack unless they're absolutely sure it's either killing Nahiri or Nahiri can't really get them that way. Um, so, yeah, Nahiri is sweet. Uh, this is in every white or red deck you're going to play. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure about constructed. Maybe probably if they not make constructed. Some, maybe if equipment gets insane. Maybe but yeah. Even then, probably not. Narset, Parter of Veils. They were talking about this card in Legacy. Oh yeah, for Legacy sure. Vintage. Well, Two, that that static ability in Legacy is unreal. It is fantastic. Two blue, one generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Nice Legacy deck. Minus two, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So yeah. you get an pa- Ascanta fire. So Paradoxical right. Outcome has been, uh, in my opinion, a problem in Vintage for a while. It is extremely powerful, redundant. It wins out of nowhere. You know, I mentioned with Jace, getting out a four mana card is not impossible in Vintage. Same with Karn, a three mana blue Planeswalker, done. It's yeah. not that hard. So if you're able to slam this on turn one, or two have fun outcome because outcome relies on returning all their artifacts and then drawing cards for that you can't do that with this any sort of m- blue mirror that revolves around chaining brainstorms and ponders yeah. and dig through time this changes everything and allows you to you know filter a little bit on your own a lot of these older formats they aren't really running a lot of removal like how are they supposed to deal with this right. you can repeal it um you can counter it but you can also picture it to counter it i mean this card has a lot of potential and a lot of the older folks are really excited about this everything i said about kasmina being the best blue planeswalker for standard pertains to narset in all of the other asymmetrical formats. so you're able to do the blue mage thing and just laugh exactly i mean spirit of the labyrinth is a card that's seen a lot of play in legacy having another ac- having access to another of that effect mm-hmm. uh, is a huge deal particularly being a blue planeswalker that is able to this is a three mana planeswalker that is really good against other blue planeswalkers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very similar to how jace Balarin sometimes would be played to counter jace the mind sculptors back when the old planeswalker rule was still uh, seal effect. of jace seal of jace essentially yeah, yeah exactly narset coming down down to preemptively prevent Teferi or Jace 
or other Jace or other Jace from doing its thing yeah, 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 is a big other, You can even Jace. bounce her with your paradoxical outcome and sure. get that loyalty back where if she's just about done, you play outcome and you're like, whoop, I'll just oh, refresh her again and you still can't do that thing. I mean, the card has a lot of potential. I'm also interested to see she lost the white side of her. She'd always yeah. been sort of an Azorius planeswalker mm -hmm. and she's pure blue, pure right. blue now. Magali again, killing it with the art. Um, I love it. Narset as a character, began as a Jeskai character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then when they became transcendent, became blue-white, and now mono-blue. Very interesting character development mm -hmm. in that sense. And five loyalty is so much. It is. Like, they might have Bolt, right? Bolt's not enough. Yeah. You're going to need more than one Bolt mm -hmm. in order to take care of Narset, and it's really cool. And how if you're was... playing against a pure control deck, you're probably boarding them out. Like, if you're keeping right. your Bolts... Yeah. You also have to be careful that the tools to beat the thing that you're trying to beat sure. don't become the weapons that they now use to kill you yeah. when it starts using Narset itself to right. stop you from doing it. Mm -hmm. Then they paradoxical income and go off yeah. because they had the Narset and you didn't. Sure. Yeah. So that's always a concern. A very exciting card. Speaking of exciting cards, right? Oh, God. God. Nickel Bolas, Dragon God, is a red, three black, and one blue. That is five mana total for a four loyalty mythic legendary planeswalker. It has all loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield. Amazing. Everything, everyone, every player, all of them. It's amazing. It has a plus one to draw a card. Each opponent, including multiplayer, each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control. Minus three, destroy target creature or planeswalker. And minus eight, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. Crazy, this card. I mean, okay. Dang. That first line is amazing. It's amazing. How often are you using that when you have access to draw a card, make your opponent's exile stuff, destroy target creature or planeswalker, or win the game a high percentage of the time. Right, but I guess it depends on what I want to do right. and what planeswalkers are out, what planeswalkers they have. I'm really excited to restart the game with Karn Liberated Nicol Bolas. Oh my god. Or, or uh, mill my opponent's library with, with Mind Sculptor Nicol Bolas. I, I mean, I like the the number of things that you can do with Nickel Bull's Dragon God are hilarious. I mean, this and the Elder Spell is seven mana. You yep. need two walkers, whether it's yours or theirs, and the game is over. Yep, that's that's incredible. I don't I don't know what else to say. To that yeah. that yeah. this this is a pushed card. This is an incredible card. It has one of the coolest abilities I've literally ever heard on a Magic card. Mm -hmm. Uh, they were talking about how sweet it is in Magic Arena when you start to use the loyalty ability for Nicol Bolas. You have there's a little drop down. Oh, you get to choose which, awesome. which, yeah, which one nice. you want it to be, and that's fantastic. So th there's just no end to great. It's too bad that Nicol Bolas doesn't. I mean, obviously, it couldn't get all of the static abilities of wow. every planes oh walker because that would get ridiculous. Right. But. That would that would sort of be memory issues. But now sure. this is just like sweet. This is just like, oh, what's your Amazing. planeswalker do? What's your planeswalker do? Oh, that's not even just yours. Oh no, oh, that's planes wow. on the Everybody. battlefield. Ooh. So you're you, you get your opponent's Teferi, for yeah. example. Oh, I'll tuck your Teferi. Thanks. Well, you'll destroy it. I'll just destroy it. Yeah, but it's fine. I'll draw cards on tap lands. That's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll. Draw cards and make them exile cards out of their hand or right. a permanent. That's fine too. I mean, more op. What's there's nothing wrong with more options, right? So. Or using the same ability twice right. for whatever reason. You know, if you want to, if you have a Teferi, you can play the plus one again, so you can untap four lands as well as drawing. But you two can cards. still only activate one loyalty ability per turn, right? Correct. Right. So for like a you planeswalker. Can't... So if you had a Teferi and you had this, you you activate Teferi plus one, untap two. You you activate Nicol Bolas plus one. Untap so for two. example, let's say you had multiple planeswalkers out. Yeah. I can activate one from each? No. No, no, okay, no. Nickel Bolas yeah. okay. yeah, is only, yeah. Right. Okay. It, it has all those okay. abilities. So you just think of the cards like, woo, that's Got it. Okay. Um, but Nickel Bolas, I mean, really cool. Absolutely amazing. Nissa, who shakes the world, is two green. Shake it. Shake it, girl. Two green, three generic mana for a five loyalty rare legendary planeswalker. It has whenever you tap a forest for mana, add an additional green. Oof. Plus one, put three plus one plus one counters on up to one target non-creature land you control. Untap it, it becomes a zero zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste. That's still a land. Minus eight, you get an emblem with quote, lands you control have indestructible. Search your library for any number of forests, put them onto the battlefield. I'm sorry, forest cards. Note that's not basic, forest cards. Put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Mm. Yeah, anything wow. that doubles mana effects is Almost always playable. We've seen the finale. We saw the there was the there was oh the green God. one. And there was something else. Yeah. Oh, I'm afraid. 
Yeah. I'm a little scared. I think X might give it to him in the Kiora. In the Kiora, Nissa yeah. Deck. Turn one, Land War Elf. Turn two, Kiora. Turn three, Nissa. Right. And turn then we, four. And then we X going to give it to you. Right. And then we just we just go completely insane. And that's the Mono Green deck. Yep. And there's so many good payoffs for the Mono Green deck. But now it has the not only the Mana Flare, but the ridiculous X spell that you want to play alongside it. Yeah. That's incredible. Really powerful card. Also is able to protect itself with its own lands yeah. um, uh, in a very Nissa fashion. I was fascinated by Nissa's role in this overarching story of magic. Hmm. Um, because, as we saw in the Art for Broken Bond, she left the Guild Pact. Mm -hmm. um, she was a founding member, I believe, of the Guild Pact mm -hmm. and decided to leave and then came back when the Interplanar Beacon was lit. And so I'm really interested to see how Nissa behaves in the more detailed story, like novel version. Hmm. I guess we shall see. I love the fact that it untaps the land that you give the plus right. one on. The fact that that's a plus one mm -hmm. is to it's untap huge. a land and make it a 3-3 three, three that now has vigilance it's for huge. the rest of the game. That's incredible. Yeah. Like, this card is dope. Obnixilus the Hate Twisted is two black, three generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Obnixilus the Hate Twisted deals one damage to that player. Minus two, destroy target creature. Its controller draws two cards. Neat. Yeah. Neat. Weird. weird. Very neat. Um, very weird. Very neat. Uh, Obnixilis' ultimate had something similar to this static ability. Right. Um, the the versatility of being able to turn your own creatures, your own bad creatures into cards, or if they have a huge, you know, if they have a Lyra you need to deal with and is probably going to be, you know, tougher to deal with than whatever two cards they draw. It's right. also true to the character of Obnixilis. You know, we mentioned earlier that he's stuck on this plane. He doesn't really root for either side. And so he's just sort of randomly dishing out cruelty to right. just kind of pass the time. And so it, it shows in the fact that, yes, you can kill your opponent's things, but you can also kill your opponent's things. As long as he's killing something, he's happy. He don't mind. Yeah. Right. I mean, essentially, you're destroying their best creature and you're dealing two damage to them because they're drawing those two cards and taking two damage. Right. And, you know, again, whatever that thing you just killed, if it's better or it was better than what they just drew, then you came out ahead there. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool that you can target your own little one drop that doesn't do anything anymore and draw some cards. It's really interesting to me that Obnixilis is responsible for bringing the Gate Watch together in the first place and now is showing up and is this sort of like really tertiary character in the storyline. Yeah. I, I just think Ob just never was that interesting. Yeah. As much as they kind of tried even, I just don't think he ever had a really great hook. He's just like hateful. Right. He's and just, and hateful is not of, a personality. He just reminds me of sort of the mustache twirling villain where it's like there's only, right. there, there, you can only make that so interesting where it's like, okay, we get it, you know? You want to be able to say that the best villains are the ones that you can understand why they're doing the evil thing. That right. to them isn't evil. Nicol Bolas is like, this is a means to an end. This is what I've been working towards. This is what I've been planning on. Yeah. All of this comes to a head because of my planning and my ideas and my struggles. Right. And Ob is just like, boy, I hate stuff. I want to screw with this bird. You know, it's like, what? Yeah. That's weird. That's not a plan. I don't yeah. empathize with that. Yeah. You're just being awful. Rao, Storm Conduit, is a red, blue, and two generic mana for a four loyalty rare Planeswalker. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it deals one damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. Plus two, scry one. Minus two, whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets rather for the copy. And this is an infinite combo with expansion explosion right. plus one more spell. <laughs> As long as you fire off his minus two and things just get completely insane. Right. And also, beyond that, is just a good value Planeswalker. I yeah. mean, immediately jumping up to six loyalty if you, there's nothing really else to do. Mm -hmm. Being able to copy a bunch of stuff, getting value off of all of your instants and sorcerers. Ral is pretty great. Yeah, Ral is really sweet. This is the card in the blue-red spell deck. Maybe it'll make it in the Drake's deck. I don't know. But it sure is really sweet when you can... Kind of work the mirror a little bit, I yeah. think, with the damage. You want to kill their Electromancer by playing a few spells, which would be nice. Yeah. And, of course, minus two, you can cast your best spells uh, to either draw you cards. It helps you with uh, your Arclight Phoenixes, fire them off. I do think that it's likely that Ral is, is because of the infinite combo potentiality, is going to spawn its own archetype. Right. Um, and it's going to look totally different from anything that we have in Standard. And that sounds good to me. Yeah. That seems sweet. Next up, we have Sahili, and we have a special guest. To tell us about it. How's it going, Magic Mikes? We need to talk because the card I'm picking for War of the Spark is Sahili Sublime Artificer. Most of the uncommon planeswalkers 
kind of niche, maybe a sideboard card in internal format, maybe a fun limited card. Not Sahili. Uh, Sahili is the real deal, and I think one of the best Planeswalkers in the entire set. So Sahili is three mana Planeswalker, one blue or red, blue or red, comes with five loyalty, and says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. Sound familiar? Young Biromancer, Monastery Mentor, uh, Psy, Master, Thop Master Thopterist. All these cards are really, really, really good. Even Murmuring Mystic, I've seen a lot of play in Standard, and Sahili is very similar to all of those. The thing is, she's actually herself a non-creature spell, so having a, a token-making creature or effect that triggers off of its own card type is fairly rare. You know, the more young Pyromancers you play, less spells you have to trigger it. But Sahili triggers herself. Obviously, you can't cast a second one with one in play. Though I guess you can if it's low on loyalty. But really, really powerful. Um, the ability to make a bunch of chump blockers for your planeswalkers is really cool. Just making an army of creatures is really cool. And the most broken card types in Magic are cheap spells. You know, Brainstorm, Ponder, Lightning Bolt. As well as cheap artifacts. You know, Mox Opal, etc., etc., and Sahili plays really well with both of them. That's not all, though. You get a minus ability. It says, target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control until end of turn. Except it's also an artifact. That's awesome. So imagine you're playing Is It Drakes in Standard, and you've played your Sahili on turn 3. Cast a few ops, a, la a Lava Coil, have a few tokens in play, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you play a Crackling Drake. And then you copy a token to be a Crackling Drake and attack for 11. That's pretty good. In older formats, I'm sure there's cool stuff you can do with copying artifacts. It's got combo potential. It has fair potential. Play this in Legacy alongside your Brainstorms. Play this in Standard alongside your Ops. Play this in Modern alongside your Welding Jars. This card is phenomenal. I think it is one of the most exciting cards in the set. And five years from now, when we look back on War of a Spark... This is going to be one of the cards we remember. So, you heard it here first. Sahili, insane. Go buy your copies now at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs> the branding! Woo! Perfect. Good job, Jim, on that yeah. sweet, Jim sweet is branding. Yeah, treasure. Thank you, Jim. He's, he's not wrong. He's this... not wrong. I mean, you look at cards like, you know, he mentioned some cards that are very similar to this. Young Pyromancer has the downside downside quote, uh, that it has to be instant or sorceries and so if it's an enchantment if it's a planeswalker if it's a you know a mana rock it doesn't really do its thing um you know you have monastery mentor which is anything which you can also do absurd things with sensei's defining top sort of looping that you know sahili falls into a very similar camp any non-creature spell artifacts enchantments instant sorceries all trigger off of that and the ability to copy powerful artifacts like you know time vault voltaic key whatever it might be um you can easily get this out on turn one if you wanted to it's a lot harder to deal, to deal with planeswalkers than creatures um and so the minute i saw this i was like this is this i would be very surprised this is one i might take a pie bet for um if this did not see play in like Same. vintage or legacy no, I, I no, no one's taking any no pie bets on this <laughs> ridiculous card i would be very surprised and furthermore i remember when they first started discussing war for the spark and the rumor surface that we're going to have 30 planeswalkers. We're going to have 30 planeswalkers? I'd better go out and buy all the Mox Ambers. Right? Mm -hmm. And then everyone was like, no, Mox Ambers is still terrible. Mm -hmm. And it is. Except for with this card. This is the only card that maybe makes Mox Amber playable. Maybe. Because you can play Sahili on 3, play your Mox Amber, immediately get value off of it with the Servo token and have the additional benefit of the Mox Amber. To be able to use for mana later or copy your Mox Amber to turn it into something useful. This is the only way Mox Amber becomes a card in standard, mm -hmm. I think. I don't believe that for what it's worth. I think there's Mox Amber might for various reasons that we're not even prepared for. That's possible. I, I just think it's too much of a blanket sure. statement. But what I would say is that I it's think that this is the most it. likely scenario. Right. My favorite thing that Jim pointed out that I wasn't thinking about was the it's it triggers itself with its own creature type. Right. 
all of these card cards that make those tokens are like, oh, this card is great, this card is great. Well, right. you played a second copy, it didn't do anything. You play another copy of Sahili, its loyalty is low, you want to, you know, just replace it. Well, right. you're going to get another servo there. That is incredible. So, again, you play the Planeswalkers and you trigger it. So, it triggers off its own card type. That is super yeah. rare. And I've seen all sorts of people who are talking about this card left and right. They're really excited about it. Whether Even if it's just in, like, the mono red decks or sure. whatever. Just for value, yeah. Like it's a thing. I guess you know. I, I'll, I'll make a servo, and next turn, it turn next turn, it turns into a chain whirler, yeah, or whatever. Okay, that's that's real. It's fine, fine. Also, just having one ones come into play after every shock and lo- wizard's lightning you play is is worth it. Is a real thing. So that said, Sahili is great, and thanks, Jim, for being a part of the show. Thank you, Jim. Salmon Tyrant Smasher is two gruel mana, green red, green red and two, so four total, for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Creatures you control have haste, and minus one, target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains haste until end of turn. Scry one. And so did they try to, because it was a little confusing with the, the wording of the haste, and I think somebody explained it as, that way if you get rid of her, the creature doesn't lose the Correct. haste. Right. So like, if I play this, and then I immediately minus it, to, like, if I have this in play and I minus it to target my freshly played creature... And she dies. And then I enter combat and my opponent kills my Samet, that's a big Mm -hmm. feel-bad, right? This is to prevent that. Yeah, it's a little redundant. Mm -hmm. Similar to how Jace triggers off of both abilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they did it just to make sure, essentially, and that's nice. Um, But ultimately, this card, it's kind of really hard to... Pretty tough to gauge. To gauge um, yeah. Creatures mm. you control have haste is fine. Powerful. I mean, it's it's powerful, but it's fine. it's fine. I mean, it's a little overcosted at four. Right. The the ability to scry every turn, the ability to pump up the creatures every turn, also good. Yes. Um. You know, this is another one of these green stompy planeswalkers. I think is where we're primarily going to see this, as opposed to in red decks or right. I mean, the red green decks that have like Gruul, Spellbreaker, and things like that might have this kind of thing. But I'm much more interested in Tyrant uh, in uh, Samet Tyrant Smasher in Steel Leaf Champion Galta decks. Maybe I don't know. I'm I'm I don't think this is really going to hit constructed personally. I think this is a limited only planeswalker. <laughs> Me too. And that it's going to be cool and neat and really good because haste and limited is great. Um, but I don't think it's, it's really pushed the right way for Constructed. That said, we have Sarkin the Masterless. Two red, three generic mana for a five loyalty rare Planeswalker. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. Uh. Plus one until end of turn, each Planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 red dragon creature and gains flying. Okay. Minus three, create a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying. Look down at your planeswalkers. Now look back at me. Now look down at your planeswalkers. <laughs> They're now dragons. They're dragons. This is wow. such an interesting design. Yeah. yeah. How cool is this card? I don't know if it's good, but each planeswalker you control becomes a dragon. Immediately. Is, what a what a sentence yeah. that is. Um, <laughs> whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, your dragons deal damage to that creature. What, what a cool concept for a card. Mm-hmm. It is so neat. The idea that you're able to play these three mana, four mana Planeswalkers and yeah, then play true. Sarkin and immediately hit for eight. And plus into eight. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah. That's incredible. And that plus ones. Yeah. This goes to six at that right. point. So you're going to have it probably next turn. And if not, they're going to have to deal with two four four dragons. And if not, you're still going to have two Planeswalkers left over. And they did something you know, in their power to stop Sarkin. That's an incredible amount of effort and an incredible amount really of damage cool. out of nowhere. You're like, oh, you got a, you know, some dorky and common planeswalkers. Yeah, like, oh, huh, okay. great, right. kill you. Like, you're dead, Nat. You're yeah. dead now. You're dead. Good. Okay. Really. Or cool. even, or even if you just minus three, maybe a dragon. Then, then plus one next turn. Sure. And eight. Yeah. Like he is his own dragon. The, the dragon arms. Remember dragon arms. Be the dragon you wish to see in the world. <laughs> nice. Don't be a dragon. Just be a queen. Mm. The, this is a card I think is really. It's it's going to create decks that are really weird. Yeah. That are just like, I, I never saw this coming, or I wasn't expecting to play this card, or this card all of a sudden got really good. That's the type of deck this card can make, where you're just like, wait, that works how? And then you die. Right. Dragons are just one of those creature types that are a lot like angels. You know, we talked about the Parhelion, and, you know, we were like, there's no universe in which you could want this, and you're probably not going to activate it. But this is one of those things that if you open, you know, and, and, and a casual player is going to see this and think, I get to be a dragon. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're it's, it's such a rare feat that you're probably going to do anything terribly spiky with it. But if it's a dragon or it's an angel or it's a demon, a big, yeah. a big old demon, 
You'll try. You'll it, try. Why would you not? I it's mean, a terrific, just... This card is terrific. Yeah. It's just sweet. And it's also tragic that this was given to Brian Kibler to preview. Yeah. And he was going to make a video about this and Sarkin's spell. Yeah. And then some idiot... Yeah ruined it, ruined what would have probably been an awesome piece of content from the right. Dragon Master right. who was talking about the Planeswalker that turns things into dragons. Oh, well, it's, it's unfortunate. Sarkon is masterless, so even though Kibler is the Dragon Master... Wow. Wow. He saying. didn't care. He didn't care. Soren, Vengeful Bloodlord, is next. It's a black, a white, two generic mana. For a, a four loyalty rare of Planeswalker, as long as it's your turn, creatures and Planeswalkers you control have lifelink. Plus two, it deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Minus X, you return target creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a vampire in addition to its other types. Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> uh, so I have a friend. Four that, mana zombify. Woo. I Woof. mean, I have a couple of friends who have been playing around with this in standard, and they said that initial testing has been very positive. Um, I'm excited for this. You know, I love that Soren's out of the wall. You know, I think that's a neat little development. Uh, you know, Soren, you know, as long as it's your turn, creatures and planeswalkers, planeswalkers have lifelinks. So is, Soren's plus two yeah. gains you life. Yeah. yeah, and so we've seen Chandra, we've seen Jaya. You yeah. know, if you're feeling frisky and you want to run Mardu, all of that Sarkon. has... Right, all Sarkon. of that has lifelink. That's bananas. Yep. That's terrific. Really this cool. was this was the card that showed up in the pre-pre-release. Yep. It was great. Like It, sure it was, was great. It was great. Plus one, kill a thing, go, you know, gain a life. And then next turn, it will have six loyalty mm -hmm. to use with basically anything in their graveyard could have been reanimated mm -hmm. up to five mana, mm -hmm. and it would have stuck around, which gives, again, the creature's lifelink, which is huge. And again, as we were mentioning uh, over the set review, which is there's so much life gain and lifelink in the set, that's how we can just power up everything. <clears throat> Everything's super powered because you keep gaining life, and you're not just dealing 20, you're really dealing 23 or 25 or 30 right. or whatever it ends up being. I do like that Soren turns things into vampires when it brings them back from the graveyard, I think that the most likely scenario for this thing to be played in standard is the vampire deck, though, because the things you're rebuying are one drops and two drops, mm -hmm. and so you get multiple bites at the apple when you have a Soren Vengeful Bloodlord. Yeah, I mean, it also kind of feeds your Adopto Vanguard, which you're probably already paying life for, and yep. so it's a natural for it. Oh, gosh, it's going to gain three. Gain three when you pay for That's awesome. That's yeah, really I terrific. Yeah, this card is super good. It's not getting, I think, as much sort of press uh -huh. as some of the other ones. Look, when you have 36 Planeswalkers, and some of them are mythic, and some of them are just ridiculous uncommons that have like these crazy combo potentials, you can get lost in the shuffle. And Soren, because of the sort of B plot that Soren had in the overall arcing story, right. you know, hiding behind Gideon's big, you know, story reveal moment and the stuff that, uh, you know, Sahili and Kiora having this crazy combo potential and these other characters that are having these main story arcs against Nicol Bolas, who, by the way, also has a card in the set, mm -hmm. um, you, you can get lost in the shuffle with Soren, but a very powerful card and certainly has the potential of getting there. Yeah, and I love the fact, just my last note on Soren, is that how he got out of the wall is now a huge story point that Wizards gets to take and run with. Like, how do you get out of the wall? I guess we'll find I guess out. we'll find out. That sounds like a great story to write right there as to why and how and how it happened. Tamio, uh, Collector of Tales, is a blue, a green, and two generic mana for a five loyalty rare planeswalker. Spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to discard cards or sacrifice permanents. Plus one, choose a non-land card name, then reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all cards with the chosen name from among them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Minus three, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Neat. Very neat. Very, Very neat. weird. Very Very super unique. Uh, shout out to Athena Frolic, of course, for the TikTok for mm, this. Did great. Um, amazing. All of these abilities are super relevant on cards that we've seen printed before. Um, and so, and, and are super flavorful for someone who is a collector of tales and a researcher, someone who's known for their journal, being unable to make you discard cards because you're maintaining the knowledge, going and digging for that knowledge, regrowing that knowledge, taking mm -hmm. back knowledge that was lost. Very unique and interesting. As a four mana planeswalker, as a source of card advantage, very good. Unable to protect itself other than ticking up to six, which sometimes can be a downfall for these kind of uh, cards. But, but it, it mills itself. It mills, mills its, it mills you, which is great. It also prevents you from getting attacked on a different kind of angle, not having to sacrifice things or discard things. So mm -hmm. you're shutting off 
single combat. Mm -hmm. You're shutting off the sacrifice effects, the the various judgments, for example. Davriel, and something like that. also shutting off discards. So you're shutting off Davriel. You're shutting off um, any of the mind rocks that you happen to be playing against. In addition to trying to dig deep and find your five drop that you want. Or right. Something. So if you guess wrong. You just minus three and get it next turn, sure. which I think is great. Yeah. Uh, self milling yourself for four, regardless, going right. up to six loyalty. That that in of itself can have power and can be used uh, strategically in different ways. So th these, this is one of those kind of cards where I'm like, I don't know where it's going to go. Yeah, but I don't I bet know. It's going to be really. My cool. first thought with this card was, oh, this is a prime speaker card because I want to find prime speaker in my prime speaker deck. But mm -hmm. it already costs four, and it isn't a creature, so I don't yeah. think it goes there. Right, but it goes somewhere. It goes somewhere. I'm Positive it goes somewhere. I just don't know where right now. I know where this one's going. <laughs> Teferi Time Raveler is a blue, a white, and a generic mana for a rare oh four God. loyalty planeswalker that says each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery. Plus one until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. Minus three, return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand and draw a card. Like finales? Yeah. <sighs> This, I think, that we all collectively had the same reaction to, which is, first response, why? <laughs> Second what? response, this card's very good. This card's very good. This card's crazy. Oh really, though, why is my question about Teferi. Uh, obviously, Teferi, the hero of Dominaria, was our card of the year last year. It dominates standard to this day. Do we really well, need formats. another one? Teferi has supplanted Jace as the Planeswalker of Choice in Modern. Yeah. Um, it's seen play in Legacy and Vintage. I mean, four formats. And this card wow. appears to show... I mean, Teferi shows no sign of slowing down thanks to this card. If you thought you had just kind of dealt with the first one, made peace with it, thought you knew how to beat it, you know, accepted it, well, when it rotates in standard, this could very well take, a place, take its place. And three mana Planeswalkers, older formats, love that. Oh, absolutely. And the, the functionality and the, the flexibility of bouncing your own History of Banalia so you can play it next turn and have more blockers, the, the, the line of text that your opponent can only play spells when they can cast sorceries, if you have not lived in that world, if you didn't play it back in Time yeah. Spiral, yeah. when... It used when, to cost five or four. Five. Yeah. 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 That was huge. People, it felt just unbelievably demoralizing. And you had this unbelievable sense of control because you're like, nothing you do matters. Yep. If it ain't sorcery speed, who cares? So you just kind of like pay attention to your own stuff and you get ready for them to do anything. And you're like, all right, go ahead. And they try to cast something at sorcery speed and you go, nope. Yep. And you go, thanks. Thanks for playing. That's really, really fun. My turn now? You know, so this... So fairy is nuts and is real and is great and kind of scary how good this card is, quite frankly. Pretty scary. Teo. 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 The Shield Mage. New, different, interesting. Yeah. Cool. It's a white and two generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. You have hexproof. And minus two, make an O3 white wall creature token with a defender. There's not a lot of things that make Defender tokens, as we know from Homelands. Right. Wall of Kelp. <laughs> Wall of Kelp. Yeah. Says what's up as a $20 card now. Nice. Oof. But you now have, again, in the Arcades deck, this is the exact type of thing that you want in that deck. And it's fantastic. And as just a walker that makes some O3s, that's cool. Yeah. But this is what I want in my Arcades deck. That's and oh, by the way, you have Hexproof, which you know is a big deal. Is a um, thing. Prevents you from being targeted by discard. Uh, thought Erasure sees a lot of play if this can come down before late game Thought Erasures. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Control Mirrors, you're trying to wait until you have like 10 mana, be able to Thought Erasure out a counterspell, counter the other counterspell to resolve your threat finally. Teo prevents that sort of inevitability from happening. Not to mention the fact that this is essentially gain six life a lot of the time against the burn decks. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you have hexproof and you have to burn it down. And you pair this with Watley to <clears> where <throat> those walls suddenly can do power. There are right. effectively three three walls that can defend. You can gain life off the butts. Yeah. yeah. Gain life off the butts, y'all. Off the butts. Another of these interesting characters that was in some of the early key art, uh, we didn't know anything about Teo, just like we didn't know anything about Davrit. Well, we knew something about They're really about banking Davrit. on him, too. Like, but we, we don't saw... know anything about Kasmina. Yeah, right. they're really <clears throat> banking on him. I believe it's already been revealed that he's in, like, the sequel book or something. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the new crop. They're really... It's kind of like Saved by the Bell, the new class. Right. They're really putting their stock in these this new batch of characters. Right. Well, I like, I, like, I like the idea of the Shield Mage. I think the look is really cool and interesting. And new players in particular 
particular love stuff like this. They love the idea that I can just build this wall, mm -hmm. I can make this fort, and I can just go have fun with my magical stuff, and you can leave me alone. Right. And that's <laughs> what Teo lets you do. Now that's really sweet. The Wanderer is next. It's a white and three generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker with no type. Legendary planeswalker, no type. That's right. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. Minus two, exile target creature with power four or greater. Yeah, so it has sort of like an Elsbeth type effect for the minus two. Not that I'm saying she is Elsbeth and not one of those crazy kids. Um, but a lot of talk about who this person is. Um, this card pairs very well with Command the Dread Horde, which is where you can, if this is already out, you can choose as many planeswalkers and creatures as you yep. dare, and you don't take any damage for that. So that's a really neat little combo there. But one of the most exciting, most talked about characters from this set, everyone's dying to know who they are. Right. Um, we've heard all sorts of theories about it, and I'm really interested to see here. I, I mean, the line of text of Legendary Planeswalker, no dash, no subtype had people buzzing immediately. Yeah. And it's amazing how much buzz you can create just by doing something as simple as omitting something. Yeah. Right. Or just saying, this is the person. From what I've heard about the Wanderer, the Wanderer is a character that is a planeswalker that has difficulty controlling their walking ability. Yeah. Right. And will pop up and disappear and pop up and disappear kind of at random. Yeah, yeah. according to the professor's video, because the professor got to preview this, um, planeswalking normally exhausts planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. Like they can't do it immediately after planeswalking, she has to exert effort just to stay on the plane because after right. she arrives, it's not the planeswalking itself that tires her out, but if she's not careful, she'll immediately jump to another plane. And so if she wants to kind of steer herself, she has to will herself to kind of stay where she just planeswalk. And so neat take on planeswalking. And again, just really excited to see where it goes. Right. There's a, there's a really cool angle when you have something that is essentially out of the out of the person's, out of the character's control. Yeah. And that makes it an interesting struggle for them. Uh, much right. like Legion, who was Professor X's son with right. schizophrenia, <clears throat> but he was a mutant. So he like he couldn't really put it all together, but he was right. crazy powerful right. if he could just like lock down what he was thinking. Yeah, I'm interested if the Wanderer now is the one planeswalker that wants the Immortal Sun. Because the mm -hmm. Immortal Sun forces you to stay in place. And so she doesn't have to, ex or oh, they don't have to extend themselves. To try to cool. stay wherever they are. I think yeah. that's kind of neat. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh, and lastly, I, there's one last thing. I appreciate the fact that Wizards is like, yes, we made Command the Dreadlord, and yes, we made this card, and yes, we tested that interaction, and yes, it's powerful. Cool. It doesn't end the world, Dope. but it is very good, <clears throat> and let's do it. And I'm, I'm excited Love to build that deck. Tabalt, Rakish Instigator, is a red and two generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Your opponents can't gain life. Minus two, make a 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with, quote, when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. I like that it's the same devils that were from Shadows Over and Estrad. Yep. Um, I think that this is, I mean, this is the best Tibalt they've ever printed, certainly. Um, your opponents can't gain life is a really powerful line of text that has kept I know, rampaging. It's banned and standard. Right, has kept rampaging <laughs> Ferocidon on the banned list. Remember, inaction is a choice. Unban <laughs> rampaging Ferocidon. Justice for Ferocidon. <clears throat> um, I would yeah. vote for your campaign. Just, yeah. Yeah, uh, Tybalt, two D devils, um, is is fine. Um, I would not be embarrassed to have this in my my draft deck. Probably not going to get there in standard. I think it is in sideboards. I okay, think this sure. is a card that when you're playing something that yeah, gains yeah. a lot of life, has a ton playing of life. Playing against link. the Dovin's Acuity deck, for right. example, yeah. perfect card for that deck. And so, Tybalt, I, I appreciate it as being a scalpel. It's not going to run the, the tables. It's not going to make the the name of the deck or whatever. Right. But it might be just a little part of something that fixes one specific problem. Great. Which I appreciate. Ugin, the Ineffable, is six generic mana for a four loyalty rare legendary planeswalker. Colorless spells you cast cost two generic mana less to cast. Plus one, look at the top card of your library face down. I'm sorry, exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 colorless spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exile card in your hand. That's wow. so cool, by the way. Minus three, destroy target permanent. That's one or more colors. Yeah, so we were talking about what Tron would want, whether modern Tron would be would be interested in the new Karn. And based on the discussions that I was witnessing, they were actually more excited about this card hmm. because um, it, you, th you have to think of this as being more like Karn liberated than 
Ugin. And so when a lot of people first initially evaluated this, they were like, Modern Tron typically runs like two Ugins. And so when this card came out, people were like, ew, why would we want a third Ugin? It's like, no, 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 no. You need to think of this as a fifth Karn, not a third Ugin, because what it does is more Karn-like <clears throat> than it is Ugin-like. Yeah. And so when you evaluate it in that regard under that lens, it becomes a very, very attractive card. Um, you know, obviously having that Eye of Ugin-like ability of your colorless spells costing less, right. all of those mana, you know, rocks that you use to crack, those are essentially free now. Um, your Oblivion Stone costs less if you need to. Um, there's a lot of value here. I'd be very surprised if this wasn't in Modern Tron. Uh, the Vintage Folks didn't seem <laughs> too excited about that. They wanted the Karn, the Grand Creator, or whatever. Sure. Um, but either way, I think both these cards have homes. I just think you have to look at them a little differently. I think that that speaks to great design, that you can have two colorless Planeswalkers that different colorless decks want for different reasons. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, it even stacks. You know, you think of stacks as being different <clears throat> than shops. They want different things. Right. And so I think when you see a colorless Planeswalker, there's a tendency to lump them all together. Right. You know, where it's like, you know, same thing with me, where it's like, you play black, you must love this. And I'm like, I really don't. Right. And so, you know, the, the different shades of colorless, you know, no pun intended, really is something for everybody and they will all use them differently. And I think that's great. I mean, this, this card in of itself is just so much value. It's really cool to see that Colorless planeswalkers are not this like unreachable goal. Right. You know, that aren't this like broken in half thing that they can't control, that aren't this thing where like no deck ever really wants them because it doesn't do the right thing. Or it goes into a certain deck because they wanted it to. They made Carnival Ready cost seven mana. It's exactly the number you want. Ugin was so sweet they made it eight, but that's okay. Right. Making them cheaper is what that deck wants. A one mana Oblivion Stone? Thanks. Right. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. And again, they're telling a story without giving us flavor text, which I really appreciate. The fact that it does have the Eye of Ugin text. Yeah. The fact that the plus one is essentially manifest, mm -hmm. which was sort of the story of Fate Reforged. Yeah. Right. Um, I think is just super interesting. And of course, being a colorless planeswalker, getting rid of uh, um, one or more colored permanents is super interesting as well. The other thing that I saw noticeable about Ugin was the subtitle, The Ineffable, hmm. was sending some of the Vorthos people into a tizzy because in The Ineffable is a nickname for Yawgmoth. Yep. I see. And so that would mean that Ugin is Yawgmoth? <laughs> and people were like, what? Only if the Wanderer is the very late. world? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> So people were like, all that under there. Not that, just... not that multiple people can't have the same name. Right. It's just, you know, that's that's one that people were like, it's, really? There's there's certain, I guess the way to put it, these sort of dog whistles in Magic. Mm -hmm. Sure. Where we're like, wait, wait what, what yeah. was that? Well, what did you call that card? Excuse me? Right. Well, it's kind of like when Rashmi came out and Rashmi was a reshuffle of Mishra. People right. were like, <gasps> is it really she, Mishra all along? She's like, coming a Mishra? Is she a transgender Mishra? I was like, sure. yes, to all. Like, right. <laughs> Sure. Let's do it. Come Let's on. Let's do it, you know? Well, I've, I've definitely heard that, I mean, now that we have have gotten rid of Nickel Boss, at least for the time being. Who are the big bads who are left? Where is the magic story going now? And the big bads that are left are the Eldrazi, who are who uh Emrakul is still Barf. trapped. And we're in the still moon, a little fatigued from. Yes. We're still a little fatigued from. Yogmoth, who hasn't been around for 15 years. The Raven so Man maybe has come to, exactly Raven Man, who we've touched on a couple times thanks to Liliana's storyline. Limdul, who is sort of isolated to Dominaria, and Yogmoth. So, or there's an opportunity to create new villains. Or there's an opportunity to create new villains. Yes, there are going to be new bads, and that's fine. But Ugin in and of itself, card is super cool, and yeah. I think it's going to see a bunch of play. Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, is a green and two generic mana for a four loyalty rare legendary planeswalker. You may cast creature spells as though they had flash, plus one until your next turn, up to one target creature gains vigilance and reach. Minus two, look at the top three cards of your library. Exile one face down and put it put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. For as long as it remains exiled, you may look at that card and you may cast it if it's a creature card. Really good. Uh, the ability to have it not in your hand, right. not dependent on Vivian, mm -hmm. but being able to cast it whenever and however you want is insane. Uh, giving all of your creatures flash for the low, low cost of three mana on essentially a monocolored enchantment kind of deal mm -hmm. uh, is super powerful. And and the uh, the plus one is good is good bonus as well. Vivian's turned into a really exciting addition to the Planeswalker Pantheon in that, you know, you have sort of mono green where you have Nyssa and her connection to the land itself and being very passionate about that. You don't really see Nyssa do too much with animals per se. You have Garrick who is really tied to the hunt itself and having animalistic tendencies but not really spending much time with the animals themselves. Um, and then you have Vivian that really conjures them, you yeah. know, it enjoys the spirit of them. And uh, it's a very 
fresh take on green that I really, really like. Um, I like that they gave her a personal stake in this. And I've just been very pleased every time I've seen uh, anything having to do with Vivian. And it's, it's just very interesting and fresh and makes me want to know more about her. I appreciate the fact that the Exiled card you can play for the rest of the game. It doesn't matter if yeah. she dies or whatever. That's really nice. Vraska swarms and I'm sorry swarms eminence is two Golgari mana green slash black and two generic mana for a five loyalty uncommon planeswalker. Whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a player or planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. Ooh. Minus two, create a one one black assassin creature token with death touch and quote whenever this deals I'm sorry whenever this creature deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. This is a callback to her first iteration where she made assassins and if the assassins hit a player, if that ultimate went off and they hit a player, you lost the game. Right. Um, and so that was a really neat card that a lot of times you'd bring it against the control decks, yeah. ironically enough, that didn't have any creatures where you could just sort of freely tick her up. And, and then you you exhaust them to the point where it's like, all right, here's three zombies. Do you have anything? And right. if not, I'm going to kill you. And and that's been watered down a little bit. But this is still a neat take on that. You mentioned the uh, the flavor, you know, going back to previous iterations. And I love this take on Baraska, you know, being the swarm's essence. I love the style of this Anna Steenbauer. Steinbauer. Steinbauer. Love yeah. the art on this. I think it's gorgeous. Um, I think it's great. I like having a like a death touch centric card. Yeah. Like being, well, what is the intersection of black and green? What could be a mono black planeswalker? What could be a mono green planeswalker? What could be both? And having it all centered around death touch and not just regular death touch, but planeswalker death touch as well, I think right. is a really clever way to do it. It also plays the game, you know, uh, if you have a 1-1 one -one death toucher like a typhoid rats, you're inclined to kind of take it because you don't want to risk your creatures. But if you do take it, well, now you have a 2-2 two -two typhoid rats. And right. so that will only get you by so long when you normally would be just inclined to take it and, and deal with it somehow. Yeah, the uh, the pre pre release had this card out in effect, and it was great. It wasn't overpowering or anything. Sure. It was just very good, mm -hmm. and that's exactly totally. where you want these uncommon planeswalkers to be. Uh, I'm not sure if I see this in constructed per se, but as a limited card, it was terrific. Yeah. And last but not least, Tezzeret, dun, dun, dun. Master of the Bridge. This is the buy a box promo for the set. It's a black, a blue, and four generic mana for a five loyalty mythic legendary planeswalker that says creature and planeswalker spells you cast have affinity for artifacts. Ooh. I like that they don't explain yep. what affinity don't is. Don't even bother. Don't even bother. Man. Plus two, Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge, deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of artifacts you control. You gain X life. Minus three, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Minus eight. Exile the top 10 cards of your library, put all artifact cards from among them onto the battlefield. This is absurd. And this yeah. is a buy a box? This is a this buy a box. box. Ooh, this card is very good. This is very good. He's been conspicuously <coughs> absent from the story, though. Like, looking back on it, we've seen, just, we've seen all the cards prior yeah. to this. This is the only card he appears on. Right. What was his job just to turn the thing his on? His job like... was to turn the bridge on. <laughs> that is the extent. Turn the bridge on. So, the story goes like this. Um, and we had a great video narrated by Graham Stark going over what Nicol Bolas' grand scheme was. Mm -hmm. I'll have to watch that. It was mm -hmm. uh, go to Amonkhet, make an entire plane that's your army. Mm -hmm. Go to Kaladesh, get the bridge that can get the army to where you want it to go. Go to Ixalan, get the uh, actually sun. start get the uh, uh, get the beacon to attract all the planeswalkers. Get the immortal sun to trap them there. Mm -hmm. That is the plan mm -hmm. all coming together, so that he can start harvesting sparks, eat them all, and in doing so, becoming ultra powerful again with the elder spell. And that's why Ral Zarek was helping out because it made the beacon. Correct. Yeah. Um, Tezzeret's only job in the entirety of Kaladesh was to get the planner bridge. And by the end of the story, Tezzeret had become the Planner Bridge, I believe is what it was. Or yeah. he, the bridge was in him somehow. Mm -hmm. um, the real bridge was bridge the Bridge was inside of us, no, yeah. Right. Um, and so <laughs> he was able to, you know, rip his chest open like, you know, Clark Kent ripping open his suit. And, the, and then all the zombie army walked through him. Which means he wasn't there. I bet that felt weird. It, I'm sure it did, okay. to have an entire plane of people coming through. Your chest? Like, that's a lot. Um, wow. And so, <laughs> I, I'm not exactly sure how the pseudoscience there works, yeah. 
being a planner bridge. But again, we're telling a story right. with this character. The affinity for artifacts is a terrifying three-word combination that magic players from a long time ago will obviously recall and uh, dread. Mm -hmm. Minus eight, do the planner bridge thing is super interesting because because planner portal cost eight right um and eight has oftentimes been referenced in in uh, like the tower the tower cycle mm -hmm. um eight is just a magical number when it comes to transporting things to another plane yeah. so i was really impressed by how they were able to use that tell that story and give tezzeret a moment in the sun without appearing on any other cards and to make a buy a box promo that is a planeswalker yeah. is kind of crazy in some ways. In it's that a little scary. Is, it's going to be one of the most powerful cards that they've made a buy a box. It's going to be one of the most sought after cards that they've made a buy a box of. Uh, and, and even if it never even hits constructed, commander players want this. Yeah. They're ready for this. Their, their body is ready to play a crazy artifact driven deck and have Tezzeret slam down and then just go You don't even have to try. I mean, the average commander deck runs, what, 10 to 15 right. rocks? I yeah. mean, all the soul on, rings, all right. the mind I mean, stones. You don't even have to go out of your way for this. And then each opponent, that just screams multiplayer. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this was definitely made for commander for a reason. It's fantastic. Cut to six months from now. We're having banning conversations. Yeah, I know, right? Are we totally tired of Tezzeret? <laughs> Nexus of oh Fate 2.0. Oh, all that beautiful band footage. <laughs> Ferocidon, maybe? Ferocidon, right. you ain't? I don't know. I guess we'll see. But that means we have reached the end of our journey. Ooh. The end of... Are we the, crossing the bridge? We're crossing we're crossing the bridge. bridge. We are right. crossing that bridge, as it turns out. And uh, that is the end of our complete set review for War of the Spark. We have been here all the live long day. So now that we've reached the... I have a quick question okay. based on pie bets. Now okay. that we've seen all of the Planeswalkers... Yes. What is the archetype? What is what is the build that you see with Ignite the Beacon? Because I'm just curious where it goes. Sure. Uh, this to me would be um, just basically a toolbox. This would be a Super Friends toolbox deck. Where okay. they just I'm, I'm looking for the card that does this to shut down that. Gotcha. And there's so many different Planeswalkers that are just like little needles right. that so where you, you need them to so go. So you play this to go get your Karn against the Artifact deck. Or you right. go get... Uh, the Chandra against the deck that you, that you want to be pinging uh, opponents with. And, and or you just need card advantage. Or you know? just need card advantage. Right, so in your turn, okay, I want to get the thing that draws me cards. Essentially, that would be Chandra. Okay. Oh, I don't want to die right now. I'm going to go get Dovin, or I'm going to go sure. get uh, Teo. Right, Teferi. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get Teferi if I'm like playing against the control deck. Like, there's a variety. They've made so many walkers. Sure. I just, it's hard for me to imagine that. Again, it's an instant. Had it's, it been a sorcery, I'd have been like, no way. It's Yeah, I mean, it's it's five mana draw two very specific cards so right. i can it's definitely there right. it's definitely possible um and it might not be good enough i don't sure. know but i love the idea that i can go get hero of dominaria or i can get the new teferi or i can go get vivian or i can go get whatever and just answer a problem that i have hmm. via planeswalker cool yeah that said thank you guys so much all of our kickstarter backers for making this happen without you we wouldn't be here uh, we have a ridiculous blooper reel that will be coming your way at some point as to the back of the behind the scenes of all this craziness. Whew. Uh, yeah, now it's time for me to get hit with something yep. that is in a pie shape. On the other side of that bridge is a pie. Wow. And in the, on the other side of that pie is his face. As it turns out. Yep. That said, we thank you guys so very much for watching, so very much for paying attention to Magic Mics and letting us do this stuff. But until next time, I am Evan Irwin. I'm Aaron Campbell. And I'm Ruben Bressler. And we tapped all the cards. So you didn't have to.